Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sensei series. Today I've got for you a guitar player's guide to alternate tunings. There is good reason why we use a conventional EADGBE tuning, but that doesn't mean we can't step outside the box now and then and get some really interesting sounds. To master a new tuning is almost like relearning your instrument. This video is meant as a starting point that can hopefully lead you down some wonderful paths. Before we get into it, I want to mention the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with over 25,000 classes in business, design, and music. These types of music classes will make anything you learn on guitar easier. Premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join intro to music theory, ear training for beginners, and countless others. It's affordable and annual subscription is less than $10 a month and the first 500 of you to click the link in the description will get a two month free trial. All right, let's get into it. We'll start with my personal favorite alternate tuning open E, which works especially well if you're playing slide guitar. For this, we tune our guitar so that when we strum the open strings, it produces an E major triad which from the thickest to thinnest strings is E, B, E, G sharp, B, E. Your A string goes up a whole step to the B, your D string goes up a whole step to the E, your G goes up a half step to the G sharp, and everything else stays the same. I personally only use this for blue stuff with the slide, but there's a wealth of other possibilities as you get more accustomed to the tuning. What's nice about this tuning is it enables us to move around a major chord with the slide. If I bar all the notes on the fifth fret, I get an A major, for example. If I do the same thing on the seventh fret, I get a B. This makes it especially easy to play something like an E blues, which only has an E and A and a B chord in it. I can pick notes from those positions and with a couple little embellishments and fairly little effort, it sounds pretty decent. Our lowest two strings give us a power chord so I can create a blues type rhythm very easily. From there I can do a call and response with my lower rhythm and higher notes. done your theory homework, you know that the notes and the chord that this tuning creates are the root, the fifth, the root, the major third, the fifth, and the root again. With that information, you can figure out which notes outside of the bar position work and come up with a ton more licks. <laughs> we've only applied this in the key of E, it'll work nicely in any song in a major key, and with a bit of practice it can work great in minor keys as well. The other one thing to remember is that if you've learned the notes in your guitar in standard tuning, you only need to relearn one string. The notes on the three E strings are the same, the notes on the two B strings are the same, the only one you need to work on is the G sharp. This is where I'm going to leave it for open slide tunings. I know a lot of other musicians will use open C or open D. I personally don't. If you want to dive deeper, check out the course Slide Guitar 101 over on Skillshare. Next, we're going to talk about one of the most common alternate tunings, Drop D. This one, it's easy enough. All you do is take your low E string and tune it down a whole step to a D. Like our open E tuning, you now have a power chord on the bottom, which can help out a lot with heavier riffs. What I personally love most with drop D is putting that low D note in chicken pickin' style telly licks. And if I'm doing any finger picking in D, I can now add that low root note in there. I just need to make sure I compensate with my other chords. Moving on, we have dad gad tuning, named so because the strings are tuned D A D G A D. You drop both E strings down a step to the D, and the B string goes down to an A. When all the strings are strummed open, it gives us the airy sounding D suspended four. <laughs> Gotta love it. I don't use this tuning all that much, but when I do, I always find wonderful sounds that I wouldn't normally stumble upon. I have a fairly basic method for how I use this, but keep in mind you can always go deeper, and I'd recommend that you experiment with it on your own. What I'll do is for my A strings, I'll use the open string, the second fret, and the third fret. And for all my other strings, I'll use the open string, the second fret, and my fourth fret. This is the set of notes I'll pick from. <laughs> 
With this Mixolydian sound, there are plenty of lines and weird chords you can come up with. For me, Dadgad is just experimental and fun. I know Jimmy Page used it for a handful of songs, though I don't know of any guitar players who use this predominantly. I'm sure there's got to be some of them out there. Next up is the most common and easy to use alternate tuning, down tuning a half step. We're gonna spend very little time on this today. All you do is simply tune every guitar string down a half step. A lot of rock bands did this, Guns N' Roses and Stevie Ray Vaughan come to mind. Generally speaking, it's done to help out the singer. As a guitarist, I can still play my open chords and licks, but the singer doesn't have to sing quite as high. In the case of Stevie, it also made it easier for him to play those insanely thick 13 gauge strings he used, which sound amazing, but also require Olympic weightlifter strength to bend. Next up, we have the Keith Richards tuning, which tunes the guitar much like a five string banjo. To tune like Keith, the first thing you have to do is remove that pesky low E string. Now that that's out of the way, the A string goes down to a G and the high E string goes down to a D, giving us a nice open G. Apparently Keith started using this back when the Stones were recording Exile on Main Street and he just kind of stuck with it. Like some of our other tunings, this gives us a power chord on the bottom, which is great for this classic rock riff. And if you play a lot of major chords, you can now slide them around with a bar. The unorthodox layout can get you out of scene guitar in your typical patterns. Whenever I mess around with this, I always end up finding myself playing Rolling Stones type licks, which makes sense. And last, we have Nashville tuning, also known as high stringing, which has limited practicality, but it also might be just what you're looking for. First, you remove the four thickest strings on your guitar and replace them with thinner ones. I'm using 30, 20, 14, and 10 gauge strings. These four strings are tuned to the same pitch as a standard guitar, but up an octave. It's as if you're playing a 12 string, but you removed all the thickest strings. Anything we play will have the same fingerings as standard tuning, but will sound quite a bit different. Here's a G chord, for example. On its own, I've never found much of a use for it, but when paired with another guitar playing the same part, it can sound almost like a 12 string, but with its own unique character. There you have it, six alternate tunings and how you can start having fun with them. If you've got an alternate tuning that you like to use, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Again, I wanna remind you that anything you do in music will be significantly easier if you hone the basics, and today's sponsor, Skillshare, is a great resource for that. There's a wealth of valuable information over there. You can browse through it without even signing in, but remember the first 500 people to use the link in the description get a two month free trial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you found this useful and I think you'll have a lot of fun with these new sounds. An extra big thank you to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you want to watch another Sensei series, hit that link up there. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Stay tuned. I'm Samurai Guitarist and I will see you again soon.